Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Wadier. And I'm Tommy Welling, and you're listening to the Fasting for Life podcast. This podcast is about using fasting as a tool to regain your health, achieve ultimate wellness, and live the life you truly deserve. Each episode is a short conversation on a single topic with immediate actionable steps. We cover everything from fat loss and health and wellness to the science of lifestyle design. We started Fasting for Life because of how fasting has transformed our lives, and we hope to share the tools that we have learned along the way. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Fasting for Life podcast. My name is Dr. Scott Wadier, and I'm here, as always, with my good friend and colleague, Tommy Welling. Good afternoon to you, sir. Hey, Scott. How are you? Fantastic, my friend. Excited for this post-Thanksgiving foray into the OMAD intermittent fasting strategy, the one yes. meal a day. We're going to go back in the time machine to the first resource that we ever created in mm. the fasting space way back sometime in early 2020, a couple hundred episodes ago. And we're going to break down the one meal a day strategy and really kind of re-engage and continue the momentum for some as you have navigated a healthy, enjoyable Thanksgiving holiday here in the state. So Tommy, I don't know about mm. you, but mine was incredible. Foods were eaten, times were had, <laughs> and I feel great. Can't say yeah. the same thing about four years ago, going into right. the holiday season before I started oh, fasting. Man. Don't even um, remind me. <laughs> you're right, right? So if you're new to the podcast, thank you for listening in and giving us a shot. We want to become part of your fasting for life journey, talking about how we're going to adapt a fasting lifestyle to create long-term health outcomes. So many of us come to fasting for weight loss this time of year with the holiday hullabaloo and all of these extra opportunities and foods and things that can, that can come up. We want to insulate you from that and give you some action steps that you can do to take away and put yeah. into your day-to-day -day life. If you're an OG, welcome in again. Thank you for being on this journey with us continuing to support. Thank you for the five-star reviews. Those are absolutely our favorite kind. I love them. Right? Keeps the podcast world, keeps telling them that we're doing something valuable mm -hmm. and bringing episodes each and every week. And that's ultimately what we want to do. Want to hear more about our journey? Head back to episode one. Give it a listen with Grace, of course, because uh, you know that was a couple hundred episodes ago. And Please. Yeah. I don't know. I might have been on AirPods sitting in my car recording it. Can't really recall, but it is one of our most downloaded episodes and it's it's impactful because you know we are and have been and, and still are on this fasting for health and fasting for life journey with you. So, Tommy, with that being said, let's get into the post Thanksgiving one meal a day intermittent fasting strategy. So, there was an article that we came across, and it was interesting because it was framed at should you do the OMAD diet mm -hmm. parentheses one meal a day? Is it right for you? Question mark. And that is. A question, man, that we get so often around yeah. fasting. Like, what about one meal a day? You guys have a resource. What do you think? Do you use it? Do you do it? How often should I do it? Should I continue to do it? Is this sustainable? Are you still doing it? Yeah. Are you still doing it? Is it working? And all of these mm -hmm. different things. So we're going to go through some of the framework here, Tommy, and just unpack this concept of one meal a day. Yeah, one meal a day is interesting. Actually, before I ever started fasting or before I read the obesity code and started to just kind of, you know, digest the information and the science and start to understand, you know, what where where I had kind of veered off course or or why w what I was doing and tracking everything wasn't working for me and, and it just didn't fit into that like eat less move more kind of box for me for sustainable weight loss and gaining control of health one meal a day was was not something that I had heard about up until that point so I don't think that I hear very many people actually talk about it who aren't very familiar or who haven't tried fasting in the past but at, at, at the same time, I feel like it can sound a little bit like extreme to some people because they're used to thinking about three meals plus one or two or three additional snacking opportunities too. Mm -hmm. So maybe up to six times eating a day. We also hear that from the nutrition and, and kind of fitness world about eating more times throughout the day and fueling the fire, the stoking the metabolic fire and things like that. So going from four to six, you know, eating opportunities a day down to one can sound a little bit extreme, right? And I Why think are you it's, starving it, yourself, Tommy? Eat. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know, I already, I already ate. I already took on some meals, and so some of those times when I had six eating opportunities in a day, maybe I should have only had two or three. And so maybe there's some balance to restore in the overall net equation here, right? 
yeah, maybe you're carrying some extra luggage around the midsection, maybe. right? And it's like, maybe oh, so. I ate those calories already, right? Like, I still have right. those. I'm still carrying them with me. Yeah. I just remember when I started fasting and I'd lost initially about 30 of that original 50. And I walked into my wife's clinic and it was someone from the local CrossFit gym. She was like, wow, you look great. And I was like, thanks. She goes, what have you been doing? I haven't seen you at the gym. I'm like, I know I keep hurting myself. So I'm not doing those workouts anymore. I'm doing some walking yeah. and some rowing and some zone two training yeah. and stuff. She's like, oh, what are you, like you dieting? I was like, oh, I'm doing some fasting. And she stops dead in her tracks and goes, why would you oh. starve yourself? That sounds awful. And it's yeah. funny because this one meal a day, this article calls it a diet, but this one meal a day fasting strategy is a very powerful strategy. It's become a lot more mainstream than when we started a few years ago. And it's labeled as the hottest weight loss trend, right? And <laughs> The opening sentence is, it involves eating just one meal a day and fasting for the rest of the day. Sounds crazy, right? Question right. mark. Well, we've talked a lot about this. We've had tens of thousands of testimonials now where one meal a day is an efficient and effective way to lose weight. And there are some pitfalls. There are some pros and cons to it. And we're going to talk through those and kind of discuss like, is one meal a day working for you? Is one meal a day a fat loss strategy? Is one meal a day a maintenance strategy? Is one meal mm. a day a long-term health strategy? And for some people out there, it is. Yes mm -hmm. is the answer to all of those questions. So how can yeah. they all be true? Well, because we want to personalize this to you as an individual. So our first resource, the Fast Start Guide, you can still go head to the show notes, uh, excuse me, mm -hmm. head to our website, thefastingforlife.com. You can click resources, you can go grab it. it, comes with a little set series of six videos with yours truly speaking. By the way, Scott mm -hmm. here, because this is not visual, <laughs> you don't know who I am. And if you're paying attention, maybe you know from the intro or the pre-roll, which I still think has some of the best music out there in terms of the podcast world. But, but you're not biased, right? But I'm not biased. So you get in there and it gives you like, okay, pick a meal, set your intention, set your timer, rinse, repeat, right? Yeah. And so many people immediately go to OMAD dinner, right? One yes, meal a day yes. dinner. And Probably there's some reasons 95 why. percent of people that we've asked, and we've asked thousands of people. Yeah. OMAD dinner. Yeah. Thousands, tens of thousands, mm -hmm. if you count the challenge and the emails and all the mm -hmm. messages, right? So and there's some reasons why, right? So one meal a day is a version of fasting. We talked a lot about ADF recently, more some more research has come out about it. You know, 18-6, 16-8, the warrior fast, which is the 24, you know, 20 hours of fasting, four hours of eating. Mm -hmm. And there are some research articles about OMAD or version, close versions of what one meal a day is, things that have a little bit more, you know, open eating window. And the number one reason we hear one meal a day dinner is because it simplifies the equation. It's like, oh, well, dinner with the husband or wife, dinner with the family. Sure. I'm, I'm off of Social, work. Social. Yeah. Maybe a date. Yeah. yeah. More it's, life things fit into the dinner rather than for a lot sure. of people, rather than like an OMAD breakfast. When you come to intermittent fasting for weight loss, first thing is like, well, just wake up at your normal time and then delay eating an hour, delay eating two hours, delay eating three hours, delay eating four mm. hours. And yeah, then it, all of a sudden, altogether. skip breakfast, you're at lunch. Well, for some people, mm -hmm. breakfast is actually pretty important. Yeah. And it can be a long-term sustainability part of your equation. So, hey, guys, what's the best fasting schedule? The one that works for you. Yeah. The one that's working. So is OMAD dinner working is the first question I always like to ask. Mm. Is it working? Yeah. And what are is we here? Is the hearing? scale moving? How are you feeling? What we hear oftentimes is it has worked. It's not really working right now, but I don't know what else to do. It's kind of my comfort zone. It can become yeah. a very comfy blanket, you know, warm, warm blanket, right? Or it was working, but it stopped. Why? Because I stopped doing it or because some mm. slippage got in or because yeah. I've hit the dreaded weight loss plateau, which is an actual normal part of your weight loss journey. Yeah. We effectively call it momentary maintenance. Now, mm. if you've been at momentary maintenance for six months, you're momentarily not doing you're not doing the things required to get the results, mm -hmm. yeah. right? We need something. Moment. Yeah, we need, to, we need to shake things up a little bit. Yeah, we need to mix it up a little bit. So yeah. how are you doing, OMAD? What mm. does your boundaries look like? Is there slippage yeah. in there? How many it days a, a week? Window. Yeah, has has it become a window. Yeah, that window opened up. <laughs> a grazing window, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That's why we call it a nutrition opportunity as well. What type of foods are you eating in there? Because it's crazy every week inside of our coaching group on Thursday, we do our call at 11 a.m. Central. And then by the end mm -hmm. of the call, we're like, hey, you're halfway through your week. Yeah. And every week I say that, I go, how are we only halfway through the week? It it's Thursday weird. afternoon. It feels very weird. And a lot of people will do OMAD during the week, but then Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, so almost a third of your week. Almost half. Yeah. Almost half is, I'm great at fractions and math, as you, <laughs> as everybody that's listened for a while knows. <laughs> I'll stick to physiology and x-rays and, you know, and anatomy right. and research art and fasting. <laughs> anyway, 
So these are the types of things that we want to kind of talk through. So OMAD has a lot of power. And if you've been doing IF, 16, 8, 18, 6, and it's not moving the needle, one mm -hmm. of the key things is that OMAD can be the magic secret sauce to really get the needle moving because some cool things happen at that 20 hour mark where insulin drops really low and you yeah. you actually get into ketosis and you you start burning through the glycogen mm -hmm. and you know you start feeling some of those benefits of pushing that window past the standard intermittent type windows. Yeah, there's there's real good reasons why when you first start fasting 168 can move the needle for a lot of people. It doesn't move it for everybody. It can depend on how much weight you have to lose, what how you've been eating before that, all of these kind of things. But as we start kind of tightening that up and then we work our way into OMAD, it's very different from a big open window at the end of the day. Like we're talking about dinner being the most popular choice for for OMAD. But when that dinner, when that one meal a day becomes one window a day, and that window becomes kind of a slippery slope, that can be trouble. And that can also lead to plateaus. It can lead to frustration and even some regain too. Right. So making sure that we're treating it as a meal rather than a window, that's part of the mindset going into OMAD, one meal a day, knowing that it's not necessarily going to be the, the last fasting tool that I need to develop. And also knowing that it can be helpful just to change the time of that one meal a day from time to time yes. rather than just doing just the one, even if it's lunch or even if it's breakfast, but especially if it's dinner, it can be helpful to go, I haven't tried an OMAD lunch. Let me do that because just eating earlier in the day once in a while can be enough to break through like a little bit of, you know, mental plateau or feeling like the scale has been stuck too. And that, so a couple of things here, you just hit them perfectly in the article was like, well, this is one meal a day is picking the same meal, eating at the exact same time, having one hour every single day. And then 23 hours later, you're fasting. Yeah. I'm like, great, that'll work. But is it working long term? Is that sustainable, right? So the best mm -hmm. plan for you, weight loss plan, health plan, is a plan that you can stick to consistently. Because what you just talked about with opening your windows and slippage and all of this stuff, I heard is consistency. And then also yeah. the second part is the intentionality, right? So it's really simple because you just it simplifies the process, which is why it's like, oh, it's simple. I got one meal, right? Mm -hmm. But then if you if you're trying to cram in an entire day's worth into that window, you're not going to feel very good. So yeah, this <laughs> automatically stacks the deck in your, I only know because I've done it, stacks right. the deck in your favor to create a caloric deficit and then eat to satiety. So you're getting some repetitions and yes, you're removing yourself from the multiple meals and snacks and all that stuff a day, but you're mm -hmm. also giving yourself an opportunity to listen to your hunger hormones and, yeah. and that push you might through. not have heard in a while. Right. Yeah. And push yeah. through the first few days, right? Tommy, we have a shout out from one of our most recent challenges, you know, where the first few days might be a little bit harder when you transition to OMAD. And that's why we have the blueprint to fasting for fat loss. It's a free 20 page PDF. You can head to the show notes, click the link, and we'll email that over to you. And it gives you some variations on, on what it looks like to build up, ramp up, vary your windows. Because doing the same workout, just like working out, variation is yeah. key. But doing the same schedule day in and day out, like you're gonna want some variety, right? Variety is the key to life, right? That's an old mm -hmm. adage or cliche or something phrase out yeah. there. I'm terrible at paraphrasing. Spice right? of life too. Spice yeah. of life. Thank you. See, you're so bad at it. But <laughs> in the beginning, to your OMAD meal too, for sure. Gre <laughs> ghrelin, I prefer salt. Ghrelin can come up, which is your hunger hormone. We just did an episode recently, a couple episodes ago, about ADF and mm -hmm. how even though your ghrelin increases, your satiety and your hunger does not. Because yeah. ghrelin is a mechanical hunger hormone. If your stomach's empty, it's gonna growl. But are you really hungry? So when we're and does it lead this, to more like overconsumption? It doesn't. You know, too, right? Yeah, that's the cool thing. It doesn't, thing. right? So you bring insulin down, you push the window a little longer. Maybe you've got some, you know, variation in there. You can vary your windows, do a lunch to dinner, a lunch to lunch, dinner to dinner, right? Mix it up, eat breakfast every now and then. We have breakfast every Wednesday night for dinner, but the kids eat breakfast almost every day. Mm -hmm. I don't, right? Some right. days I yeah, do, <laughs> right? I don't really like a lot of breakfast food. I can eat steak and eggs any time of the day. That's not breakfast oh, to so me, good. it's just a meal, right? Yeah. So. When we're talking about consistency is with the OMAD plan, one of the pitfalls is I'm doing the same time every day and then some life events come up, some non-negotiable events come up. Maybe it's Thursday and you do good on Thursday and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you're off track. So you're not getting consistency, consistent reps with using this to get 10, 15, 20 pounds of your weight loss journey off. And maybe you've got 20 mm -hmm. pounds. So maybe you're not using this consistently enough or long enough to get the five to seven to 10 pounds off, right? Where then your yeah. physiology changes. And the key here is you gotta start thinking about long-term lifestyle adaptation. Mm -hmm. So the OMAD gives you those repetitions to start working on some of those skills.
Yeah, it's, it's interesting too, because, you know, as, as you become a smaller version of yourself, you need less calories to fuel your machinery, mm -hmm. which is, is another one of those things oh, where calories, hold on. You just, Whoa. this also simplifies <laughs> the, the equation phone. where you don't got to worry about tracking and weighing and counting yeah, anymore. Beautiful. It's going to stack the deck in your favor and simplify once again, keep going. Yeah. So as you become a smaller version of yourself, like, you know, uh, fat cells are, are shrinking. I'm, I'm burning through some of that stored fat. Well, if I'm thinking of my one plate, my one meal in the same way that I used to think about it, then it's going to at some point be enough or maybe more than enough or no longer have the same built in caloric deficit that it did whenever I, I started it. Mm. And that can be part of the misunderstanding or oftentimes overlooked part of using OMAD as a long-term strategy, which we do hear about a lot as a very successful long-term strategy, but also oftentimes leading to frustrating plateaus that are oftentimes misunderstood. So Claire here from one of our, our recent challenges, she said, before this challenge, I was an intermittent faster slash OMADer, but I couldn't mentally break through that OMAD barrier. So I, I like you can stay frustrated for a while without really realizing why. And so she said, I have 70 pounds to lose you know, for my target. So I, I knew that this was something I needed to push through and get out of my comfort zone to actually lose the weight. So the challenge actually helped her to actually do that. And so she, she spent time during the challenge actually focusing on some other things and using learning some new skills that helped her get out of that comfort zone. So that's such an important part of the process, that understanding that OMAD might not be the end point. It might not be the the last really good fasting skill that you need to develop to push outside of those those boundaries and, and things like that. And that's that's why, you know, we have this challenge coming up here yeah. to in order to to level up going from OMAD to an additional set of fasting skills to like get you past those plateaus and get into the next level. And that's a shameless plug, right? Because people are like, oh, you're talking about a cha another challenge already? Yes. Heck yeah. Right. Around the holidays? Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. We do it every November and December. So one end, six weeks later, we do another one. Well, this time it's actually yeah. a week shorter because we got the holidays. Yeah. But it doesn't mean we're not going to do it. So this upcoming challenge on December 13th is going to be the last challenge of 2023. Go into mm -hmm. 2024 with a bunch of momentum. You'll hear more about it in the upcoming weeks. You can head to the show notes, click the link for more dates, times, details, etc. But I want to encourage you that if you're thinking about OMAD and you've felt connected to some of the talking points so far through this conversation, you know, this is why we started off with you and I both did intermittent fasting and keto with limited results. Yeah. Never mind the dozens of other programs and calorie counting and macros <laughs> yeah. and tracking and all the all calorie, I don't want to calorie talk about it. all the other stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Earning our meals on the treadmills and all the diet oh, mentality man. type stuff before we started yep. to learn and you know well, 10 PM cardio and science <laughs> came. Yeah, a little 10 PM little little three hundred cal burn on the elliptical, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So when we look at this, yeah, we started off with, you know, intermittent fasting and keto. Then we both went to, you know, doing some OMAD, some more extended fasts. We don't mm -hmm. do a lot of long term as of this moment, as I'm recording right now, I'm in the smack, almost smack dab in the middle of a seven day fast. How often do I do that? Once a year. Nice. I'm doing wow. it with a couple of friends, cool. reversing some autoimmune stuff, doing it more from a spiritual standpoint this time around, which is, which That's is awesome. Yeah. Which is a different experience. But when we looked at OMAD, we started there, got a lot of great results, but then I went back to OMAD after I lost the initial 50 pounds and my habits hadn't changed yet. Mm. So the weight started sure. to creep back on again. And I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Well, we weren't really talking about foundational fasting habits and this OMAD is one of those skills. But what Claire was talking about in the challenge is that she, she needed a different set of skills. She needed a different application Correct. of them, right? So yep. I absolutely want to encourage you to hop on it before the end of the year, start 2024 with even more momentum than ever before. So it, Going back to the article here, you know, there are some pros and cons. We talked about hunger. One of the OMAD pros is it really amplifies those IF benefits, right? So we were just kind of talking about that. It really moves the needle for some, gets you into ketosis, drops that insulin, allows your blood sugar to come down to burn more glycogen more quickly. Yeah. So you're not brain just stuck. Fog. Yeah, brain fog, cognitive improvement, more energy, mm -hmm. and less hunger after a few days, right? And then we already mentioned that it automatically puts you in a deficit. It's hard to consume an entire day's worth of calories in a one Not hour. Not impossible, especially if you're eating yeah. out or eating the P word, right? That ends in uh -oh. I-Z-Z-A, right? Those types of things, fast foods, higher caloric, restaurant foods, that type of stuff. But once you get in and out of ketosis more frequently, your hunger does come down, right? You have more mm -hmm. energy, you sleep better after the first few nights. Some of the downsides is that you're going to have to, you know, manage your hunger. You're going to have to make sure that you're supplementing with a quality sea salt or Celtic salt or Himalayan mm. salt, right? You know, make yeah. sure you're hydrating properly, not just drinking more water. And, you know, the reality is 
every time you do a fast, it's going to be a little bit different, right? So like For I sure. mentioned, I'm in the middle of a seven day fast. And I wanna give a shout out to NutriSense here too. I'm in the middle of a seven day fast and mm -hmm. I had an incredibly poor night of sleep last night an 18% recovery on my whoop. Again, whoop, if Ouch. you're listening, like, hey, <laughs> come on, like sleep, you're right? huge proponent of my journey. Like yeah. I wanna share my story with using whoop to improve my sleep and I want, uh, come on whoop, give us a shout out here. Let's partner up, <laughs> shameless plug. But when I look at my blood sugar in the middle, you know, day, I started Sunday, we're recording this on a Wednesday. You know, I woke up, my blood sugar was over hundred today. And you're going, you're in a seven day fast. Did you wake up and like snack attack and sleepwalk in the, in the pantry? Like yeah. what happened? Well, because I've recommitted to doing NutriSense again with the six month membership. And if you're not familiar with NutriSense, it combines the cutting edge technology and human expertise. So you can see how your body responds in real time to food, mm -hmm. exercise, stress. And in my time, in my case right now, sleep. It pairs the CGM, it's a little thing you wear in the back of your arm, completely painless to apply. And then you have the incredible app and the dietitian guidance as well. It's really allowed me to know, because if I was, I'm gonna compare this to OMAD in a second. If I was doing OMAD and the results weren't matching my expectation, I'd get defeated. So I'm in sure. the middle of a seven day fast. My expectation is by this time, I'm euphoric, I'm feeling great, I'm on cloud nine, my ketones are high, I'm crushing right. life, right? And what come to find out is my sleep last night was awful. My recovery was awful. And having mm. the CGM on then tells me, well, yeah, your cravings are up. Yeah, your brain fog is returned. Why? Well, because my blood sugar levels are elevated, which means my insulin is elevated. So combining wearing the CGM consistently for months at a time, I now know that when I have a night like that, this is what I can expect. Yeah. Right. And this allows me to make better decisions today. It allows me to make sure that I go for my walk, that I do my cold plunge, that I take a few minutes for myself and just refocus and recenter when the hunger hits, because I am, mm. I do have worse blood sugar control today because of my lack of sleep and that additional stress on my system. So if you're looking for that type of support and that real time info, head to NutriSense.io forward slash fasting for life. You're going to get 30 bucks off and a month of dietitian support. I would just encourage you to commit. If you're doing things like OMAD and you're struggling with consistency, this is gonna give you some real-time support, Tommy. So I just love the parallel here to the conversation that we're having. And as we go into some action steps or the decision-making on, is OMAD an effective strategy for me? Do I wanna lose weight quickly or focus on long-term habits? Is this a lifestyle adaptation that I can use? Should I be doing more intermittent fasting? Should I be doing low-carb keto? But truly, is OMAD the solution for me at this point on my journey is the last thing I mm. want to kind of unpack today as we wrap up. Yeah, and I think when you start with intermittent fasting and you think about a 16-8 or an 18-6 or even Warrior 20-4, there's less of a need to plan ahead for those kind of windows because there's plenty of time for planning in the moment when the window opens up. And that can be part of why those feel easy to get into, but part of why a lot of people haven't tried OMAD or haven't done it very long, very consistently, because I would definitely suggest a little bit of planning goes a long way when jumping into OMAD, because I think mentally you can commit to it. If you want to say, let me give this a, let me give this a go, downloaded the fast art guide. I get it. It's simple. Let me try this out and see how I feel. So I, I think that that's, that's a first step. And then second step would be really just planning for, you know, 30 to 60 minutes, really considering this a meal and treating it a little bit differently than you treated that old fasting or that old eating window, or maybe you called it a feasting window or something else like that. Really just, yeah, right. just kind of going, this is different. This is a little bit different. This is going to be a sit down meal. It's intentional. Let me spend a couple of minutes and just make sure that if there's something that I really want, let me put it on my plate. Let me sit down so I can kind of be present in that, in that moment. Cause you know, 30 to 60 minutes, it's not going to be that much of my day. And then the flip side of that coin is going to be, even though it's a meal and the time is kind of like partitioned out, let me let me make sure I set a fasting timer for it because that's going to be an important part so I can mentally have a reminder, you know, of what I decided. And mm -hmm. then what am I going to do with the rest of my day is what the I, other like, part Yeah, what do that, I do with my right? hands now, right? Yeah. I think that's important, you know, because otherwise like that big hunger pain comes along or the, hey, I'm used to having lunch maybe at the office or, you know, something else along those lines. You have these, these habits. Food truck right? you drive by, sure. the, the little 
you know, pre-dinner snack on the way home from the gas station. Yeah, because the windows open, that was acceptable before, but now mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to do it a little bit differently today. So what do I do during those times? So thinking about that ahead of time, at least just for a few minutes, kind of gives you a preparation for those moments ahead. And if you've been doing IF or you've been, you know, doing OMAD and it hasn't been consistent, hopefully this conversation has illuminated some of the things and some of the potential reasons why. Because I just remember going back to having this conversation with with a challenger back in the day where, mm -hmm. you know, we had we had ended the challenge and we, we went through the seven day schedule and we gave a ramp out schedule. And OK, well, what do I do now? Right. Because I'm on in the mm -hmm. middle of a seven day fast, like maybe I'll lose six to seven pounds. Right. Most of it's glycogen, water weight. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, I would have lost like 12 to 15, right, carrying all the <laughs> extra weight. But now it's not even about weight loss. Oh. Right. So it's like, yeah. OK, I'm doing the once a year reset. Friend of mine wanted to do it. Hey, you want to do it? I was like, great. I'll instead of doing it in January, I'll do it in November this year. Perfect. But there's that regain at the end, right? So come out of the challenge, same sure. thing can happen. So this woman was like, yeah, well, I'm going to go back to doing OMAD. I'm like, great. But was OMAD working for you? Mm. Well, no, question. I've got 30 pounds to lose and I kept losing the same three to five pounds. Right. So that's not your solution at this part of your journey. So are you in a fat loss phase? Are you in a momentary mm. maintenance? Are you just starting out? Are you looking at using OMAD multiple days a week as part of your maintenance strategy? So I love to sit down and put a little bit of planning and forethought into the strategy, into the usage of this OMAD approach to intermittent fasting, rather than just going willy nilly, kind of wading into the deep end and seeing like, hey, where am I? I'm kind of flailing my arms around trying certain things out. So yeah. picking a couple things that resonated with you from today's conversation about OMAD, and then putting that, like Tommy said, that intentionality into your decisions, into your window, and then mm -hmm. also being a little bit of flexibility, have some flexibility with it too. You know, mix in some meals you don't normally eat, put some foods in your window that you love. Don't omit and restrict and paint yourself into a corner of being yeah. on or off with OMAD because you can be on or off with OMAD, you know, like I said, Monday through Friday. And then those two weekend days, man, like we want to create consistency and consistent foundational fasting habits. Yeah. And for me, OMAD has been a really cool tool to not just lose weight on the journey, but also maintain it as well. That's such a great point because I used to feel like the salad, like a salad was kind of the holy grail of foods whenever, whenever I was eating back from the eat less, move more, you know, you get a big bang for your buck as far as not having to put that many calories in my tracker. But if you're, if you're going into OMAD and there's not really a, a lot of foods that you're looking forward to, that can be really problematic because you don't have, right. you don't have many opportunities during the day and it, that can lead to burnout, you know, FOMO pretty too. quickly. FOMO for sure, if you're missing out is a, is a big one. So, you know, if you're, if I you're ready to jump- I can't have that anymore, right? Like, oh, I can't yeah. eat that. Nothing's off limits. I mean, you shouldn't True. be eating highly processed, refined, sugar-laden foods every day, but like, yeah. you can eat a cookie. It's okay, right? Right. You know, you like- with a cookie. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, I, I kind of interrupted your thought process there. <laughs> no, I like, mean- it It's just that mindset shift, right? There's, there's so many little, little landmines, you know, that, that we, that we hear about or, you know, that we, we see even for experienced OMADers. So if you, right. if you're, if you're looking to, to jump into OMAD because, you know, it's, it's time to kind of level up what you've been doing or tighten up that window, then, you know, go grab the, the fast start guide for sure, 100%. And if you're, if you've been doing OMAD and you're ready to level up to the next level and ready to mix things up, like maybe you've been at an OMAD plateau or whatever the case may be, then jump into the challenge because we're definitely going to be, you know, pushing the boundaries on this kind of stuff too. So no matter where you are in your fasting journey, there's definitely some action to take after this episode. Absolutely. So you can head to the show notes, you can grab the blueprint to fasting for fat loss 20 page pdf we will zoom it over to your inbox the challenge link is there coming up last challenge coming up on december 13th you can grab the fast start guide head to our website thefastingforlife.com you can get the videos i'm going to encourage you to do something different right if you're the one who's going yeah. to always go get more information and then just kind of sit with it and plan and then oh, maybe I act a little that. bit I'm i want you that. to jump in head first do something step out of your comfort zone take an action now which is why we say each and every day, each and every episode, we want to give you something actionable that you can go do now and, and put into your fasting lifestyle. So I'm going to encourage you to do that, Tommy. I think there's a really cool conversation about OMAD, bringing it full yeah, circle 200 minus episodes ago <laughs> when we started and created the one meal a day fast start guide. Really cool. Should have this conversation more often. Conversations like this, bringing back some of the old tenants and the old pillars of our program. For sure. And that fasting lifestyle, for sure. So I appreciate the conversation, sir. Thanks for listening, everybody. And we'll talk soon. Thank you. Bye. So you've heard today's episode and you may be wondering, where do I start? Head on over to thefastingforlife.com. 
and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive fasting tips and strategies to maximize results and fit fasting into your day-to-day life. While you're there, download your free Fast Start Guide to get started today. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to leave us a five-star review, and we'll be back next week with another episode of Fasting for Life. Oh,